It's time to take a ride on the Steelers Afternoon Drive with our co-hosts, Alan Saunders and Zachary Smith. Hello, welcome into another episode of the Steelers Afternoon Drive. I'm Zachary Smith. That means that's Alan Saunders. Alan, the background is back. Training camp. We are back. We are back here at St. Vincent College for today and two more days. So it's crazy. Not long for, yeah. for this world. Um, but uh, yeah, man, that's it's crazy that it's almost over. But yeah, just got a couple left here at uh, St. Vincent and um, car just wrapped up a little while ago. Got uh, Cam Hayward recording his podcast like right over there. <laughs> so like, there we go. It's a very he, yeah. That was my spot first. You know, he kind of kind has got to copy me. You know, I I understand. I'm a media professional. He he's, might have seen like he's just where a you were set up. Player. He's like, oh, those are good things, dude. You know, yeah. That's I'm thinking. Now, he saw where you were set up, and he was like, you know what? We got to get out there. Now I will say, he's with. I think he's recording with TJ today. It's like. Oh. With all due respect, I, I think he's got a better guest, maybe. Like, I think I think he's. <laughs> I would say. So. Oh, see, we should have. I, I know that you said we got to set up Derek coming on here. But, I mean, if we can oh, make that yeah, happen, we'll you know. Derek on here, yeah. Toe to toe. We'll do that, and we'll do that uh, maybe tomorrow or Thursday. Yeah. Uh, everybody, if you could do happen. us a favor, before we really get into the meat and potatoes of the show, be sure to subscribe, like, hit that notification bell. Uh, if you're listening somewhere else. You can listen to the rest of the show, but then leave a five-star review after that. And, of course, leave us a comment down below. We're going to read some of those at the end of today's episode as we try to do with all of them. Some really interesting stuff kind of carrying on a conversation that we had on yesterday's episode, which if you missed that, whole playlist is created. You can go and catch that one or any of the other shows uh, that we've done in the past. But, uh, Alan, first things first, as we always kind of have to do at this time of year, just a little bit more reshuffling, bringing in a new running back, releasing your running back, some transactions taking place. Uh, let's start there. Yeah, uh, Zazavian Valade is a new running back from Arizona State, and before that was in Wyoming. He's the second leading rusher in Wyoming history. Spent one year at ASU, ran for 1,000 yards, led Sun Devils in, uh, was it all-purpose yards or yards from scrimmage? Yards from scrimmage. Um, and... Went to Houston as like a priority undrafted free agent. They were they spent like one hundred seventy five thousand dollars of guaranteed money mm-hmm. on this guy, and cut him in the first week of August. So, not quite sure what happened there. Um, Might have just been a depth thing, but Steelers snapped him up. And I think you know in terms of like that RB four kind of spot, which has been a practice spot, squad spot for the Steelers the last couple of years. I think he's going to immediately insert himself into that conversation. Didn't really practice much today, but I was talking to my buddy uh, Cody Tucker, who covered Wyoming. And, you know, he said he's he's a good player. Like, he he, he felt like he should have been an all-pack 12 selection last year, and he kind of got uh, robbed from that. And I think he's a guy that, that we'll be able to add to this team right away, which is, let's be honest, like somewhat unusual when you're talking about guys you're pulling off the scrap heap on August 15th. So definitely a little bit curious situation that a guy that well-regarded coming out of the draft, he really was the guy that I think most people expected to be drafted. Um, and mm-hmm. then when he didn't, you know, if you remember, it was like the same kind of thing the Steelers got, like uh, – Shakur Brown was that cornerback a couple of years ago where like everyone thought he was going to be drafted and then he was undrafted and the Steelers spent a lot of money for him. Now he ended up not making the Steelers. And last I checked, he was in the USFL. So maybe that's not the greatest example, but I, I think uh, yeah, this is a well-regarded player. If you look his re- uh, relative athletic score, if you've already looked, if you ever looked at like res.football puts out this like relative athletic score that combines a player's size, speed, explosiveness and athleticism compared to you know other players at their position he's like a nine plus like nine six something like that like way at the top of the scale in terms of athleticism so certainly something there to work with we'll see uh, what he looks like when he gets in here and uh, john levette going the other way running back from penn state uh, who just was not healthy he was hurt the first practice he was here and that was it and so spent two weeks getting right and then they cut him loose and uh we'll see what uh if anything Zazavian, I believe that's how it's pronounced, uh, can mm-hmm. can do when he gets uh, you know, a real look at the practice field here, probably tomorrow. Yeah, I have a friend who's a Ravens fan who also, well, you know, you know Richie that we met up with in yes, Mobile. Yes. He's a Ravens fan, also covers ASU. He just texted me and said, dang it. So, uh, yeah, he's not happy about this. But, um, 
Yeah, I, I think it's really interesting that RB4 spot. I know that you put out a new 53 man roster projection. Uh, right now, you have Higgins as the guy making that practice spot, but you said this is obviously a guy that could push for that too. Be interesting to see how much work he gets. I mean, which, is it feasible to think he's going to get some run in this preseason game coming up on Saturday? I would assume so. Yeah. I mean, there's really only, you know, there's six running backs on the, on the roster. Again, I doubt we'll see more than a couple of drives for Najee Harris. You know, a couple of drives for Jalen Warren, Anthony McFarland, maybe three or four. And then, you know, second half, pretty much, it's going to be Bell, Greg Bell, and uh, Darius Higgins, and, and it'll be Valde. And so, you know, I expect him to get some carries. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think it was, I was reading the article uh, at the site about bringing him in, like people talking about, like they thought there was some, like some Arian Foster there to his game, another undrafted running back who obviously had great success in Houston. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, about as intriguing of as guys you can bring in at this point in camp, I think. So I'm interested. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I think, um, you know, they, they, I know they had a number of running backs in camp there a good bit. So it might've just been a numbers thing. Certainly weird that they were taking a, you know, they, they'll, they'll, Houston will take like a hundred and seventy five thousand dollars dead cap hit for cutting him. So not something yeah. they probably did lightly. Um, but mm -hmm. I'm interested to see what he looks like uh, when we get him on the field here tomorrow. Let's uh, let's focus on some some running back stuff here to start out the show. A little bit of run heavy to start this. I want to talk about what happened, what we saw in the team period. Something that you're actually writing at the site. Uh, we talked a lot about this preseason game, the past preseason game. One thing we really didn't talk about was some of the explosive runs that we saw from the team, and you know the running backs that we could see featured. You mentioned you know some of those guys lower on the depth chart really you know weren't contributing to that yards per carry but like anthony mcfarland obviously broke a couple calvin austin not a running back but breaking off a little bit jalen warren um you know what what did you make to their performance and let's just talk about this running game as a whole yeah big team run period today uh big focus for this team it's really striking to see how physical they still are being still got pads on well, almost every day still doing lots of team runs all the way here it's august 15th um Really nice day for Jalen Warren today in practice. Thought he was the best running back on the field. Uh, he, he just continues to look really, really good. I definitely think that we've talked a lot about this offense wanting to be more explosive and having a desire to be more explosive. And I think you know, mo for most people, that thought is, well, throwing the ball down the field. Or yeah. maybe you throw it, throw it short and run it long, right? You know, where it's like a, a bubble screen that you break. Or, or, you know, maybe even the Jets, I think you could maybe put into that category. But I think this team has an underrated ability to be explosive in the running game. Like, if you give Ant McFarlane room, he can run. Like, Jalen Warren is extremely elusive. He made a run today where – all I saw was like defense, 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 tiny little crack. Here comes Jalen Warren. Like Minka had to come running up and make an ankle tackle to keep him from breaking that for 50 yards. Um, it was, you know, he is really elusive and, and makes guys miss. And I think that's, you know, if you can scheme it up right, get your fast guy on the edge, like they did for that touchdown that Anthony McFarland scored in the preseason game. If you can make, if you can get guys in the secondary to start missing tackles, those two guys have the kind of breakaway speed and elusiveness where they can they can make explosive out of the running game. The running game does not have to be this like plotting three yards of carry at a time endeavor. And I feel like Najee Harris is not that same level of explosive. It's probably going to be a little bit more plotting when he's in the game and he has a different role, right? He's gonna take punishment, you know, where those guys are, you know, maybe playing twenty percent of his reps or something like that, you know, they're out there to 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 break one loose. And I think they can, I think they will be able to do that at a different level than we saw last year. I say this with hesitation because we've seen what this offense has looked like the last couple of years, but going back to our conversation where about Matt Canada in this game and just like the wrinkles and them not wanting to show too much yet. I, I really struggle to not get a little bit excited thinking about what some of those wrinkles could look like putting the ball in Calvin Austin's hands or in Anthony McFarlane's hand in space. Yeah, they have so much more speed. I just think, you know, McFarland, like, man, night and day from Benny Snell. Like, I like Benny, and I think, you know, he was a good backup to Najee Harris if you needed him to be that. But he was not a guy that you were trying to get the ball on a regular basis, you know. And, and I think, you know, Ant is a different kind of player in that regard. Calvin Austin is a different kind of player in that regard. We saw a tight end screen to Darnell Washington, which is basically a run. Like, let's let's be honest here. And, like, man, that's a fun play to watch. 
that's not a fun play for the secondary trying to get in there and make a tackle on that giant dude running down the field. But uh, I just think there's a lot of ways where they can create explosive plays that are not necessarily deep balls. You, you know, I think there's more to it than that. And I think that's a, a very strong sign for this offense. Yeah, I, I did want to bring up something with this offense going into today's practice to uh, seven shots. The offense coming back from three to three to one down to win four to three. I thought it was very odd. And you can tell me if I'm wrong on this, that the offense ties it at three. Tomlin goes, let's go. One's back out there for the seventh shot of seven shots. Is that is that typical or like was there something like going on that like Tom was just like, I want to see the ones on ones right now. What was up with that? Not typical. I uh, know it unheard of, but not typical. And Tomlin was asked about it after practice. He just said, "I didn't want the pups to decide it. I wanted our, you know, I wanted our ones <laughs> back out there. I wanted, there I wanted is. it to be a real result." You know, one of the things that I think he's very good at is fostering competition. And you know, these guys know when a competition is not a real competition, right? They know when, like, oh, if the defense goes three and starts starts three and one, and then loses four three because the third team defense got scored on by Mason Rudolph. Like they know, like, you know, they know that's not real, right? They, they know that that's not a real test of, of what's mm-hmm. happening. And so I think he does a very good job of keeping the competition real and, and using his power as uh, as like the arbiter of things to, uh, to keep things competitive. And, and so he's always looking for, he's always looking for more competition and, I think he got it today. It was pretty spirited. It was pretty spirited after that too, man. The last uh, one of the last team periods, they were doing like a down and distance drill, you know. And um, Minka Fitzpatrick came flying over from center field to break up a pass on George Pickens, and you saw the whole the whole sort of defensive sideline get up and get in his face a little bit. And they're all yeah, you know. And uh, yeah, it's just like a dumb drill at the end of practice, but they get into it. He, that that competition is real, and uh, I think it makes everyone out here better. Um, you mentioned Minka and it triggered in my mind, just starting to think about that secondary because there's been so many guys out, but today, you know, Joey Porter returning, John O'Neill returning and DeMonte Casey returning yesterday. So that secondary starting to get a bit healthier. What did you make of that group today? Yeah, we can run down the, uh, the injury list here real quick too. So, uh, I thought the secondary was solid today. Um, not, you know, nothing spectacular. There was a couple interceptions. Uh, Elijah Riley had one. Um, off Mitch Trubisky in a team period on a circle route where they had Calvin Austin in the backfield and he ran that. If you're old like me and you remember like the old, very limited Madden playbook from like 1999, the uh, the two running backs in the shotgun fullback circle route was like deadly. Yeah, well, it wasn't deadly today for uh, Matt Kennedy and the Steelers offense. Elijah Riley has apparently played that game once or twice before, read it all the way, and I made the interception. James Pierre had a nice pick as well in the uh, three on three in the end zone. Um, I thought uh, he's been good since kind of getting called out by his defensive coordinator the other day, but uh, yeah, the, the, the injury. So Nate Herbig out uh, that shoulder talked to him this morning. He said, he's, you know, working back. It doesn't seem like it's a major injury. Uh, um, Nick Kwiatkowski also didn't practice. Larry Ogunjobi didn't practice. Mike Tomlin said he's working his way back. I don't know what that means. Uh, Trey Norwood, did not practice as well with that right calf injury. Limited was Keanu Benton and Joey Porter Jr. Uh, Benton looks fine to me. I, you know, maybe just a precautionary thing at this point. I think he'll be fine. Joey is still, you know, very clearly just doing like the individual stuff and not yet in team period. He said he wants to play in the preseason game on Saturday. As of right now, I think I would be hesitant on that plan. And Keanu Neal back to basically full participation, you know, and we got a good long look at that three safety heavy nickel package with Neil Fitzpatrick and KZ all in there together for what feels like the first time all training camp. I think they were together the first couple of days, but certainly the first time with pads on that we got to see that, that uh, unit play together. And I thought it looked really good. Um, I wanted to look at a couple of those injuries and ask further, is that the same foot for Ogan Joby that was bothering him last year? Or is it the other one? You know, I'm not sure. And I'm not even sure that it's a foot. I just know that oh. he's got, a, he's got his, um, his, you know, his foot is in a boot, but that could be an ankle. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I don't know. 
Okay. And the other one that I wanted to bring up was Norwood, just because it's we're going on a pretty extended period of time now that he's missed here. I believe that you still have him on the 53-man roster, but how close is he to not, in your opinion, being there? Like, if he can't get back to practice here very, very soon. I do not have him on the 53-man oh, roster okay. right now. I have him off, and uh, I don't think it's about the injury necessarily, although that's certainly not helping his case. Um, you know, I think for me it's mostly just about uh, the ability of – some other guys to provide more than, than what he is providing at that spot. Um, but, but yeah, I don't, I, I don't have him on the 53 right now. I haven't actually, I'm not sure I've had him on the 53 at any point. Um, I, I just think Elijah. Did Rowley, you have him as a cut or a practice squad? I have him on the practice squad. Um, okay, maybe that's I think Elijah Riley has been ahead of him the whole yeah. way since OTAs. And I still have Elijah Riley missing this team. Although I think he very well could end up making it. Um, but I just don't know where to put them. You know, it, th- those those last couple guys, you know, there's always like, hey, I've got three more guys that belong on this 53 than are actually on it. And what's going to happen is between now and then, three more guys are going to get hurt and they're going to end up on it. You know, it's just a question of how does that work between now and the start of the season? Right. Yeah. Um, another guy I want to talk about potentially making a push for the 53. Um, we talked a lot about the Raven Clark getting beat. And I had a conversation with Nick on here because he's really liked to tackle Dylan Cook has liked the guy that really hasn't gotten much buzz. Um, actually, really cool story. Not even, you know, a traditionally a tackle. Um, his story is a former quarterback transitioning tackle basically had given up on playing football, got a call short story here now here he is um do you think that he's got any shots to to take over what we thought was the raven clark spot as that fourth offensive tackle and is that on the 53-man roster or just on the practice squad yeah i do think he has a chance to be the fourth tackle i mean i don't expect low raven clark to make the team at this point he has not been very good and um if if he would stay on the practice squad i assume that the steelers would would take Low Raven Clark because of his experience. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, I would not, it would not surprise me if he does not want to and uh, that, that Dylan Cook could end up as the fourth tackle. Now, Spencer Anderson will be around too, whether that's on the roster or the practice squad, probably don't know yet. But, um, you know, I, I think that Dylan Cook has showed a lot. I, I think his athleticism is something. He's a tall, lanky guy. And so I think, um, pad level for him is probably going to be an issue and, mm-hmm. and, you know, maybe much better pass protecting than run protecting, I would assume. But I, I just think he's an interesting, you know, look, this is a team that made a starter out of Alejandro Villanueva. Like they're not afraid of a guy from an unusual background being able to do the job. I think they're going to give him a real look. And, and I think he's been impressive so far from what I've seen. Yeah. Um, I was saying that Nick can't stop saying his praise. I mean, for a guy that like, very well be off the 53 man roster um i really didn't know much about him until nick kind of filled me in on what's been going on with him there uh, but i'm glad you mentioned spencer anderson because that's where i want to pivot to next he got some run at center with the second team i mean obviously I, I don't know if we talked about it enough on here but it was talked about by basically everybody else how kendrick green looked in that preseason game uh not very good i, I you look at like okay maybe the most Hated man in Pittsburgh the year that he had to play center in front of Ben Roethlisberger. Um, everybody fell in love with him when he starts playing fullback at camp. He gets out there for a preseason game, and everybody hates him again. Um, Spencer Anderson getting snaps at center. What do we make of it? Um, yeah, Kendrick Keen was not very good in the preseason game. Uh, I still put him on my 53, but like with the asterisk, it was just like, <sighs> yeah, who else? You know, I don't know. Maybe Spencer Anderson is the who else. You know, he's the first guy that I really think. Like, Nate Herbig, I just I, – I, he's not a natural center. Can he do it? Yeah. Uh, is it going to be good? I don't know. Like, not, not really. And, and he's not doing it every day, you know. Even if you yeah. – even if they decide, like, okay, if something actually happens to Mason Cole where it's bad, our best answer is to move Herbig or Daniels to center. You still need someone to play center every day with the second team. Like, I, I just – I can't see them going into the year with one natural center on the 53-man roster from – from my recollection, they've never done that. Um, even if they had another guy that was center capable, there's always been two centers on the team. Mm-hmm. But Green has been 
bad at center. And, and then, you know, and the, the other thing is that, you know, they would not have – I think we said this when we talked about Green – uh, the fullback stuff, like they would not be trying this green stuff if he was not in position to make a team. They would not be bothering with him at fullback yeah. if, if they didn't think that he could make the team as a center. So clearly he's going to get the opportunity. And that's why I still put him there in the 53, but I don't know. Um, Spencer Anderson was drafted. Uh, is so, and that's generally a heads up case. He hasn't looked what I would call great. Uh, the one thing I'll say is like, he's handled positional versatility very well. Like he's played, right tackle he's played left guard he's played right guard he's played a little bit of left tackle and i don't think at any of those spots he's looked more or less out of place he's not the strongest guy in the world he has trouble with some straight up bull rushes can he play center i don't know ask my tomlin about this and he he said the thing with spencer anderson was intellectually they think he can do it you know like he can Mm -hmm. make the calls he can make the reads he can snap the ball you know physically can he do it i don't know we're gonna see and, and so um, maybe the first real attempt I've seen from the Steelers just to pivot to a plan B as far as who the backup center will be if it's not Kendrick Gein, I think we're going to see if it might be Spencer Anderson. It's just so interesting because, you know, a couple more practices and then they got another preseason game. Like, I mean, right now you would still think Kendrick Green's going to be the second team center in that game against the Bills, right? I mean, but I, I don't know. I don't want to see anybody get hurt out there, Alan. Yeah, I mean, nobody wants that, but uh, I don't, you know, I don't think, I think they're going to continue to give Kendrick Green chances because of his potential versatility, um, because it, it's the easiest answer, right? I mean, that's just the the best thing for the Steelers is that Kendrick Green shows improvement and, you know, gets to a place where they feel like they could be comfortable with it. Um, all the other all the other options are complicated. And so I think we're going to continue to see green out there at center. I, I would, I would not be surprised if we see Spencer Anderson play some center this Saturday. Mm, okay. Yeah. I think we haven't talked about like, I mean, why would really, really talk about QB performances that weren't Kenny, but like, I thought Mason looked pretty good in that game. And like, you have to kind of keep in mind too, that Kendra green was the one playing center for him. I mean, how many bad snaps did he have, prior to you know starting to throw some dimes out there the long touchdown to to calvin austin but i don't think enough people were talking about how well i thought at least i thought mitch or mason played on friday yeah and i went back and rewatched uh some of mitch trubisky's and i honestly i thought it was pretty poor live and when i went back and watched i didn't think it was as bad as i thought it was live you know he had a bunch of bad circumstances like that ball the, the the jump ball to Cody White just cannot oh, be yeah. intercepted. It, it just yeah. can't. And, and you know, I think that that uh, I, I don't put that on the quarterback at all. He's taking a good chance there. He's got one on one coverage against a smaller corner. It just uh, you, you can't you can't have that. And so uh, I didn't think Mitch was as bad as maybe his stat line looked. Uh, Mason also probably not as good as his stat line looked since sixty seven yards of that was just like. I actually talked yeah. to Mason about that today. I was like, uh, you know, a little James Washington, Oklahoma State flashback for you. And, and he was like, yeah, but Calvin's a little faster. You know, you kind of <laughs> got to put it, got to kind of put it ahead of him a little bit more. You know, it's not the same exact throw. He's, he's freakishly fast. Uh, but yeah, I thought Mason was really good. And I don't think that there's a real competition for who would be the first quarterback off the bench uh, yeah. if something happened to Kenny Pickett. But I think, you know, Mason needs to prove that he's worth that roster spot and that uh, – and, and look, let's be honest, he's he's auditioning for, for 31 other teams too because I think the Steelers have pretty solid quarterback depth and would not be unheard of for some team to come knocking about it. Absolutely. Um, Alan, I think it's time for a little Tuesday takes here. We go to the YouTube comment section. All right. Always a fun place. Uh, for I yesterday's love it. episode, keep those comments coming. By the way, we had a ton yeah. of comments yesterday. I love comments; they're awesome. We're going to highlight the good ones. We may, at a later date, make fun of the bad ones, but that's not the hater hat is not... not on right now. You see the yeah. smiley face. This is this is happy <laughs> hat, Smitty. We are going to yes. praise the good comments today. What do you got? Yeah, if you see the cowboy hat come on, then you know you're in trouble. That's how we'll do it. Um, 
We're going to look first at my man here, 3 man 11 who said, I thought the route concepts were a little funky with spacing, but Kenny completed some tough throws. Now, keep in mind yesterday's episode, pretty heavily talking about Matt Canada because of JT O'Sullivan's comments about the, the offensive concepts that the Steelers came out in and stuff like that. So a lot of this conversation about yesterday's episode was about that. A lot of comments are obviously going to be about that. Um, yeah, so what what do you make to this? I mean, we, we've talked a lot about the route concepts, you know, going back even before this episode where we were talking about a problem with Matt Canada's offense that a lot of people don't talk about, like throw away the play calling. Why are there receivers in the same spots of the field constantly? Like that should never happen, let alone multiple times in game. Um, so, yeah, what do you make to this comment? Yeah, I mean, I don't I, – I didn't have a pro, I didn't see anything spacing-wise that I had a problem with, but I think maybe in general, um, like – maybe we undersold how good Kenny Pickett was in that game. Like, like our conversation was mostly focused about the coordinator and that's true. I, I thought he was mm-hmm. fine and I didn't think there's anything wrong with a place he called considering the situation, but certainly like they worked at the level that they worked because eight was really, really good. I mean, like just awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Really. There wasn't a bad throw. The bunch of one throw away uh, where he's kind of flinging it towards Jalen Warren just to get rid of it. Uh, other than that, man, he was awesome. And so, yeah, I, I think, Kenny certainly made the play calling result better than maybe it, it, it ought to have based on the lack of creativity. And again, I don't think there's anything wrong with being boring in the preseason, but the execution was very high in addition to whatever you think of the play calling. And, and yeah, probably good to point that out because, because Kenny was great. Yeah. I mean, the one time they, they got behind the sticks, we talked about it before we started recording you know, he he throws out uh, a little pitch to to Najee, doesn't do anything with it, gets behind the sticks. Then second down and long, for some reason, they pitch out to Jalen Warren, maybe gains that yard back. And then Kenny rolls out to his right, hits Deontay coming back towards the sticks on a third and 10 uh, to pick up the first down. And they convert that. And then it was like smooth sailing the rest of the drive once they picked up that third down. So, yeah, I think that was the one time where maybe – You know, he put them behind the eight ball offensively, but uh, the eight ball at quarterback was able to pick him up. So, um, yeah, the uh, the Pickens touchdown was a third down, too. It's about third and eight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I I, but in that area of the field, you know, you get to fourth and three, you're probably going to go for it. I don't know. I think that's that's a little different situation than like third and ten in your own zone. Um, But, yeah, I thought the offense moved smoothly, but I thought Kenny was very, very good. There's no question about that. And I think um, this other comment kind of ties in with it. And also, really, I think you're highlighting the one play that I brought up to Najee and maybe that second long decision to Jalen as well. No, there were, and this is from Batterista, uh, no, there were extremely negative plays and they had multiple third and longs that Kenny was forced to throw and overcome. Yeah, I just had the two uh, third downs on that drive. I don't, again, I don't know if I call third and eight at, in, at the 30, third and long, really, the same way third and 10 in your own end is. But, yeah, Kenny's going to have to make third down completions. Like, that's that's going to have to be a thing. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, the, the connection that he showed with Deontay Johnson is probably a very good sign for that because that's really your third down guy. And uh, and that, that rolling to the right throw where Johnson's coming back to the pylon or uh, the, to the marker is awesome. I had another one where he's rolling to his left and hit Johnson. That was not a third down, but it's very much like a third down style play call, if that makes sense. Um, I, I really thought, you know, he was great. Probably didn't give enough credit to Kenny when we were talking about the offensive success in that game. Uh, so prep, shout out to Kenny and uh, shout out to Mason Rudolph. And uh, <laughs> good comments, y'all. Yeah, appreciate them. Like we said, keep them coming so we can do this same type of deal uh, tomorrow and on episodes going forward. Um, Alan, we did get a tra- breaking news tweeted yes. at us. Yes. Um, my guy Tyler Hurley coming through. So Terry Bradshaw was the keynote speaker at the Apple Blossom Festival Sports Breakfast in Winchester, Virginia, last year. First of all, wait, I just Tyler need to, I just need to interrupt here. Yeah. The why is Terry Bradshaw the keynote <laughs> yes. speaker Listen. at the Apple Blossom Sports Festival? Apple Blossom, first of all, wait, wait, even before that, why does the Apple Blossoms Festival in Winchester, Virginia, have a sports breakfast? What's the connection from apples to sports? Okay, and then how do we get from that to Terry Bradshaw in Winchester, Virginia? Now, I've been to Winchester many times. It's it's a nice place right there, you know, uh, on 81. Uh, I drive through it a lot when I 
But like I, I do know it's not a place that I associate with Terry Bradshaw. This is not why is there even a Steelers truck like windshield like if I yeah. look up the like New York Times sports fan map, I'm sure it's like mostly commanders fans there. It, it, it can't be why? I have so many why questions before we get to I'll the be, truck. And I'll be honest, that actually, like, I, for some reason, none of that registered with me. That, to me, is actually a little bit more compelling than the truck itself. I mean, because, like, this truck, you'll, like, see this same truck basically outside of Acroshore Stadium, like, every single Sunday. Like, I've seen probably 50 of these at least. Um, but, yeah, now reading that tweet again and you, and you bring that up i'm like okay when is ben roethlisberger speaking at the peach blossom festival sports brunch it's like, like someone mad libs the steelers <laughs> tweet it's like terry bradshaw was at the apple blossom sports breakfast in winchester virginia like what i it's this actually that, that next, might be what happened tyler was next, like he had this next picture. week next week alex highsmith will be speaking at the <laughs> save the whales rally in juno this is why covering the Steelers is so great because this does not happen to other teams. Like this is all just the pervasiveness of Steelers nation. A hundred percent. Yeah. All right. So to follow up with this AI generated tweet that actually didn't happen, <laughs> we got this picture from Tyler uh, standing in front of this truck. I mean, I don't really know what to take away from this thing. Um, like I said, I'll, I've I'll seen. Say, so I'll many... say this: it's it's I'll... it's a significant financial investment here. I mean, this is a new truck with Steelers. Yes. Like you've you've spent more money on this than most of the vehicles. I feel like we're going to see here, right? Like this is like it, it is a different level of fandom when you're like dropping eighty thousand on your on your Steelers vehicle right like yeah so i think that's that's the thing that stands out to me here yeah. obviously very that's nicely great. made dealership graphic i don't i feel like it i feel like the best ones of these are gonna look homemade right like that's the charm that is missing here mm -hmm. yeah that's what i'm saying it's, like maybe if this is too professional like, this thing's got to have some more like custom stuff done to it in my opinion um but I mean, obviously, I appreciate the picture coming in from Tyler here. I, I uh, I'm trying to see like if I can see. So I see on the hood, it's got like the the gold and black pattern going up it too, um, which is a nice touch. The little flags on the front. I don't know. I mean, even if the rims were gold or something, like give me something. Yeah, yeah. I just think it's 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 quite corporate feeling, right? Like this is. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like the ones that are given away outside of the stadium, like every right, Sunday right, or whatever, right, like a right. chance to win a truck. But yeah. I'm telling you, if you if you won this in a giveaway, that's cool. If you paid for this, like that's impressive. But I don't think the truck itself is impressive, right? I think that's where I'm at. Like, like yeah. the financial commitment to a Steelers truck. If you bought this new from the dealership, that's serious. Okay, if you won it, that's awesome. I, I just don't know. I don't know how it rates on our scale. That's that's what yeah. I think I'm saying. Where where are you at with this one, Smitty? Uh, out of six Lombardis, I'm at like two on this. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one Lombardi. Yeah. I'm 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 low on this one. I do like it. I would drive it. Um, but I uh, it's not to me. I think the 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 personalization is what makes these fun, right? And this yeah. is very cookie cutter. Absolutely. So Tyler, I absolutely want to know more about this and I'm not at all talking about the truck. I want to know more about We the need Adam like a whole break Apple. breakdown of the <laughs> yes. Winchester Apple Blossom Festival Sports Breakfast. Uh when when can I be the keynote speaker? Should we go? I will make a trip to Winchester to go to the Apple Blossom Festival Sports. Like who like, is it is it Jack Ham next year? Because I'm in. I'm going. All right. If it <laughs> if it's Steelers related every year, I am going to the Apple Blossom Festival Sports Breakfast in Winchester, Virginia, one hundred percent. That's what I was gonna say. Is it like is it somebody different every year that's I, I don't know. I maybe this, this is, is Terry's thing. Maybe this is his cash cow. He just he's been living it up in retirement on all the cash he gets from the Winchester, Virginia Apple Blossom Festival Sports Breakfast. Yeah, 
Tyler, let us know. Maybe that's is that is that a truck that Terry's giving away? Is that Terry's truck? I mean, who knows? If it if it's Terry's truck, drove there? no, Ter- Terry, no, it's not Terry's truck. <laughs> no, it's not Terry's um, truck. No. all right, that's enough ridiculousness. To end the episode here, Alan. But there can never be watching? enough ridiculousness at a Saunders underscore PGH on Twitter at PGH Steelers now on Twitter and on YouTube SteelersNow.com. Myself, Nick Farabaugh, Derek Bell. Super excited to have him. We're going to have him on the podcast. I'm going to tease it for another day, and then maybe we'll bring him out tomorrow or Wednesday. So have Derek and see when his schedule works with ours. And uh, yeah, keep keep the trucks and the cars and the vans and the ambulances, hearses, helicopters unicycles boats rocket ships whatever you got keep those coming keep the comments coming uh, comments subscribe too. to we the channel leave us a like hit that notification bell so you know when we post another episode where we did a camp report or any of the other great content that's being put on the channel leave us a five-star review if you're listening on any platform that isn't youtube do all that good stuff as well we appreciate the continued support uh, that we see every single day so thank you guys in advance uh i am zachary smith pgh For Alan Saunders, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.